unspoken? Everybody doing good today. That's great. That prayer last week worked. Everybody's problems are doing better this week. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer with you. Remember the clashes today. Amen. That the Lord will bless and anoint all of us to receive what he has for us today. Lord Jesus, we love and appreciate you. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house, Lord, and to hear your word. We ask even now that you would meet the need. You saw these uplifted hands. You know whether they're physical, spiritual, financial, whatever they are, Lord, you're more than able. We ask you to bless in this class today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Brother, if you'll come, just go ahead and pass this. Lord, bless this offering. Amen. I, I really haven't found anywhere where I have to beg for anything. He said, give thanks. He said, ask. I saw a lot about asking, so... Lord, bless this offering. Amen. Uh, I don't have to beg him for nothing. Not if I'm his child. Amen. Sometimes we, our kids beg us for stuff more like, you know, don't want me. But uh, that's the only begging they ever done. They pester you sometimes. Amen. I'm going to read the uh, scripture here before we get started while he's receiving the offering. You just continue to put in. And if he needs to pass it again, just raise your hand. He'll come back around. Psalm 78, verses 4 through 8 says, We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart right, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, parents as role models. And uh, most of us in here are parents, <laughs> and uh, we're need to be role models. Most kids grow up to be what their parents are. There are a few exceptions. Uh, I went to school, I may have told you before, I went to school with a boy, um, graduated with him. His dad was an alcoholic. He had a brother that was alcoholic and another one that was on his way to be an alcoholic and a mom that was mean as a skunk. And, uh, and if you ever dealt with skunks, they're pretty mean. Not as mean as a possum, but they're pretty mean. They have a lot worse odor. <laughs> but anyway, he didn't want to be like his family. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. He didn't go to church. Uh, but he didn't want to be like his family. The boy graduated high school, went out and got him a job at Sears and Roebuck in the shoe department, became manager of that department. They flew around, and over about five years, he had his own store. He was managing his own store with a high school education. He didn't want to be like his family. And uh, I saw him... And it's been about six or seven years ago. I saw him at a class reunion, which uh, that graduation was way back. But I saw him at a class reunion, and he he had had a massive stroke, but he was still doing good from all accounts. Still a fine boy, because he chose. But as a whole, kids turn out like their parents, and when folks see the uh, kids, they just imagine what those parents are like. And so we need to uh, we need to. Uh, be careful. Every child needs to be made to feel special. Every child. I, I still don't understand. Special. And I know there was uh, ten others that felt special also. Because every child, some folks say, yeah, oh, you love them more than you do me. Parents love every child in a different way. Not that they're any more than the other, but they love them in a different way. I remember, I don't know how many of you uh, uh, ever heard of Brother Oggs. He wrote a book. I read a book on Brother Oggs. He was uh, handicapped, and he couldn't use one of his hands. And he grew up not realizing he was handicapped because he'd go and help his dad work in the yard and painting and stuff, and his dad always put one hand in his pocket and painted with one hand. And Brother Oggs said he grew up thinking that's how you paint, one hand in your pocket. But his dad done it because he knew he couldn't use that other hand. His son couldn't use that other hand. And he said he was a, on up in his teens before he realized he had a problem. <laughs> a 
but he had done grown then to realize he was important to his dad and mom whether he had a handicap or not. And a lot of us are handicapped, just not in the way folks think of handicap. And uh, they tell me, uh, Brother Taylor, I can't get a handicap sticker for my problem. <laughs> and they also say it can't be helped. <laughs> but, uh, but for whatever reason, a kid has got to be made to know that they're special and they're loved by their parents. We're their parents, and we're going to mold their life forever for whatever comes up. We have to get our, parent, our kids to realize and understand that God will supply our needs. They have to see this, that we trust in God, not fall apart every time a situation comes around. I may have told the church before, uh, I remember, uh, I started to say it hadn't been that long ago, but, you know, time just goes the way it had been a while. <laughs> I remember I had just gotten a job and, and hadn't got a paycheck yet, and uh, $485 rent due. It was due. And I had zero money. And when I tell folks I don't have any money, that means I don't have a banking account, I don't have a checking account, I don't have savings. I generally got a checking account, but it's got just enough in there to keep them from closing it. And I think they'll keep it open for a dollar, <laughs> Brother Stubbs. <you> know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I didn't know where it was coming from. And the folks I was working with, I was at work that day. I come in, I was outside uh, doing uh, installation. I come into the office, and one of the sales personnel called me to the desk and said, I have an envelope on my desk with your name on it. Now, nobody knew I had $485 house rent due except me and my wife because uh, we never went around asking. And I guess that's my mistake. You know, uh, he said, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> and, uh, and I just tried to keep all the stuff to myself. And uh, she said, there's an envelope with your name on it. I said, well, who brought it? And she said, I don't know. I come back from lunch, and it was laid on my desk with your name on it. So I took the envelope, went outside. It had $485 in it. God supplies. He loves us, people. Now, I would have liked for it to have been $1,485, but I didn't complain about the 485 He said he'd supply all our needs. He didn't supply me that other 1000 I wanted. Just the needs. I needed that. And we've and we done fine. But even on top of that, it's like we've said many times, Brother Sadler's talked about it, and Brother Brian. You know, sometimes when God does stuff, we go, wow, like we're shocked. What did we ask him for if we wasn't expecting him to do it? God loves his children, and sometimes he answered our prayers in spite of us. In spite of us. And I'm glad because I don't always uh, deserve it. Most of the time, we don't deserve it. Children need to know that they're secure in their worth in the family. They've got to realize they have a spot. And every child is different. I, I have four children. None of them were alike growing up, and none of them are alike today. But that's okay. They're all special in their own way. You know, it would be something if all of them were identical. I mean, just alike in their action. You ever run into those folks? I worked on a job with a couple of boys. They were twins. They were real similar in the way they looked. They weren't identical twins. But if you had your back to them and they were talking, one of them could be talking, and when he quit, the other one pick up, and you never knew which one it was. Their expression was the same, their tone, their volume, everything was identical. But wouldn't it be boring if all of us were just alike? I think it would be. As much as I like me, I wouldn't want everybody to be just like me. And I'm sure you don't want everybody to be like me. But that's not the point. Be honest with yourself. You don't want everybody to be like you. But God has made everybody as individuals. And if we treat them as individuals, they can still feel special no matter what the differences are. And we must instill it in our children. And I realize most of us in here, our children are grown, not all of them. But we have to understand we're still an example and we still. And if we're going to be a true Christian or role model for our children, they need to feel the same love that Jesus feels towards us. That's unconditional. That don't mean if they misbehave in are not misbehaving. And I was grown before I realized it does hurt me more than it does the kid to have to whip them. I don't like to whip my kids. I never did like to. But now, 
my wife asked me one time, she said, how come they mind you better than they do me? I said, I'm going to tell you why. When I tell them to do something or they're going to get a whipping, sometimes they get a warning and sometimes they don't, but they are getting a whooping. <laughs> now, after the fourth or fifth time, they about decide you ain't going to give them one. I count to three. Sometimes I don't make it past two. But they get the whipping. I said, that's the difference. And, and because we put it off as long as we can. But I found up as I was growing up, if I didn't get punished, I probably was going to do it again. So I remember, you, I remember running from my mother one time. You tried to run from Dad, but you couldn't because he had you by the hand. You were running in circles while he wore you out. <laughs> but I, Dad was pastoring the church, and it was up off the ground in the back. And I ran from Mama one time and hid up under the church. All day long, wasted a perfectly good, pretty day. Hit under the church all day long. And I finally come out. Dad come in that evening. Mama done give me a whooping when I finally come out. And then Dad come in and said, son, you done got a whipping. Boy. Now you're going to get one for running from your mom. And so I got another whip. See, it wasn't a punishment for the same crime. I done got a whooping for what I done. Then I got a whooping for running. But uh, that's what parents do to instill in us. And so I didn't want... I probably got more whippings than a lot of my brothers and sisters, but uh, I don't remember a lot of them because the way they were administered was in love. It wasn't, it wasn't a punishment as far as abuse. Just like David wanted to be punished by God because he knows there's mercy. And a parent that loves their kids is going to do it with love and mercy. And there's a difference in a whipping and a whooping, too. But there's a difference in a whooping. And a beating. And some parents never got that. That's why the world's a fool now. If you spank a child, you go to jail. And the Bible plainly says if you don't whip them, you don't love them. And that's, it, that's pretty plain, but that's what it says. If you don't discipline them and spank them, you don't love them. But we do it out of love. And that's what we've got to let our children know, even though they're punished. It's not because we don't love them. We don't want them to get burned over and over again. I'm reminded of my brother. His little boy was stubborn. I think he still is, but but he was stubborn. He he said they got one of them new ceramic stoves. You know, no eyes on it, but they get hot as anything else. And his son was wanting to put his hand on that stove, and it was hot. He kept, son, could, fought him off and fought him. And finally, he said, well, son, put your hand on it. And he said, you could hear it when he put that hand on it. <laughs> That his mama, that boy's mama got all upset. He said, honey, I won't ever have to tell him to keep his hand off that stove again. And he's not injured. He just burned his hand a little bit. It'll heal. But he'll always remember not to touch the top of that stove. Some kids won't learn. The heart. And that's why kids growing up, you say, what? You think I hadn't been there before? You're still young, and now I'm old. I've been there. What I'm telling you is not stuff I made up. It's stuff I done been through. I'm trying to keep you from going through it. The school of hard knocks is a good teacher, but there's no reason to get knocked around if you don't have to. But some people don't learn any other way. It's sad to say I think that was me. And I've learned that from the Lord sometimes. He hit me pretty hard, but I told him, I said, Lord, I want the lesson. If you have to smack me good, and I've been smacked good sometimes. I was smacked good by my mom one time, but that was out of fright. I jumped out of a doorway and scared her. <laughs> and my mom wasn't about, well, she was five foot one or so. But she swung around and backhanded me and knocked me flat on my back and the floor. <laughs> she was down, son, are you all right? <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but I found out that little old lady could lay me out if she wanted to. <laughs> and uh, so... <clears throat> I never jumped out of the door and scared mom no more. And you'd think somebody that knew about being scared wouldn't have done such a thing after I told, told you about me getting scared. You'd think somebody would learn. Some people are hard to learn. They got to learn the hard way. So I got slapped flat on the floor. <laughs> but uh, kids will learn that it's out of love. Kids that are abused, they grow up despising their parents. And we don't ever want that to happen in the church or in our families, either one. When they're secure in their feelings and their worth, they can feel confident going through life. They're not discouraged or confused in what they believe. 
And the scripture tells us to bring up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he won't depart from it. That don't say he won't run away, but he won't ever get away from that. He won't ever get away from that teaching. Under the right circumstances, it'll all come back. And uh, I think that's part of that thing where he said he'd bring it to our remembrance. <laughs> the stuff that we remember and that we start getting in trouble and we remember our teaching. And I told you last week, I probably would have been a lot worse than I would if it hadn't been. I didn't want to mess up mom and daddy's name. I was still young, and my name didn't mean a whole lot to me. But that last name did. And we're the children of God. We carry his name. And it should mean something. It does mean something, whether we use it or abuse it. And we don't reflect on him to discredit him because he's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. But we change, and people see the change in us. But if we call ourselves a Christian, they expect us to be different from them. They know what a Christian is. And it's not a person who calls himself a Christian, okay? <laughs> a Christian is a person who is following the teachings and doctrines of Jesus Christ. Not the teachings and the doctrines of a church, but the teachings and doctrines of Jesus Christ. And uh, the disciples, Jesus taught them three and a half years. He was teaching them. And so if we're following the apostles' doctrine, we're following the teachings of Christ. Paul, when he was preaching, Paul wanted folks to know right quick. He said, I didn't learn this of men. These, uh, all these uh, good disciples and, and, and apostles, they didn't teach me all this stuff I'm telling you about. In fact, when he first went amongst them, they didn't want to take him in. They remembered him. He used to kill Christians and put them in jail. But he said, I didn't learn this of men. God himself told me all of this and taught me all of this. I learned this straight from the source. And so when I'm telling you something, it's not hearsay. It's what he has showed me. And the thing about what's amazing, it lined up with what the disciples and apostles were preaching and teaching. If it come from the same book, it's got to be the same. You read all of these uh, uh commentaries and stuff from some of these folks that don't have a clue who Jesus is. I see all these signs in people's yards that say, Jesus. And I, every time I see one, I say, I wonder if they really know who he is. I wonder if they know that that's the God that spoke the worlds into existence. Jesus and God both said, I've done this all by myself. <laughs> so they must have been the same person. Both of them couldn't have done it by themselves. <laughs> I've never done anything by myself when I had somebody helping me. Sometimes I wish I had. Like the time I was trying to load that double oven, I believe I could have did it by myself. It's been a little harder, but I tried to load a double oven in the back end of a pickup, and that boy dropped his side. In reflex, I tried to catch it. I tore his whole shoulder up. The bicep tore loose from the shoulder. Had two surgeries for two years in rehab, but uh, because of that good help I had. But as we're going through life and we, and we see instances in our kids, we begin to teach them and instruct them from the time they're little. From the time you bring them home from the hospital, you start teaching them. I never had no problem with mine sucking their thumb. And if you did, that's fine. Everybody's got their own way to do it. But I started spanking mine hand. When I brought them home from the hospital, they stick that thumb in their mouth. I spat at a good one. And they learn. When it starts towards their mouth, their hand hurts, so they don't do that. Of course, everybody's got their own method. I've heard folks, their kids with bad biters. I had a nephew with a bad biter. Folks just say, well, bite them back. I told mine, don't ever bite one back. I said, if they bite you, Hit them in the nose just as hard as you can. That'll break it. They get to liking that taste. But see, it didn't work. Mine didn't do that. Their mama was teaching them a better way to do it. And kids, for some reason, I always run to mom when they have trouble. And when they have big trouble and somebody's after them, they go to dad. But when they got real trouble, they go to mom. And that's as it should be. You ever try lugging a young'un on your hip? Little stuff all day long. It'll kill you. But them mothers will do it day in and day out. They're designed for that. We're just designed to stand in bark orders whenever our wife gives us permission. Well, my dad always told me that if uh, 
a man tells you he's boss at his house, watch him, boy, stuff. He'll lie about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my dad was a wise man. But him and mom spent a lot of time talking. They knew what one another was thinking at all times. I never had to ask one something and wonder what the other one thought. Because when I went to them, it was the same thing. There was no use in going from one to the other. You couldn't play that game with them. They say, what did your mom say? I know what she said. Why don't you tell me? Discouraged or confused in what they believe in if we don't keep them straight and keep walking steady. It can't be this different tomorrow than it was today. It's got to be the same. I want to read you something I found. I don't remember where I found this, but I thought it was real good. It said, you can make a difference. One day a man walking along the beach noticed a boy picking something up and gently throwing it into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, what are you doing? The youth replied, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them in, they would die. Son, the man said, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You cannot possibly make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish, and threw it back into the surf. Then smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference with that one. No, we can't save everybody. And sad to say, not always can we save all our children. But we still have an obligation to try and to teach them. And like I said, it goes back to the thing. We've got to show them the way. Not tell them the way. I told you last week. I get in trouble sometimes for talking about my wife. But she forgives me. She put up with me for going on 42 years. Actually, almost 46. We went together almost four years before we got married. So she's been putting up with me a while, so she forgives me. I told somebody, I told our daughter this morning that I know sometimes she threatened to throw me out, but she'd always got a rope tied to my leg, so when it's okay to come back, she can drag me back. <laughs> but, uh, but I know some days she probably wants to throw me out, but she does put a rope on me, and I'm glad of that. I'm glad. I always check, be sure the rope's still there when it comes time to throw me out. Evidently, this boy had a good role model somewhere to realize that he could make a difference. He was taught that you could make a difference as an individual, as a boy. And we have to let our kids know that. They have to be taught the Trump strong values that we believe in. Yes has to mean yes, and no has to mean no. No don't mean maybe. And my dad and mother raised us, and all we taught me, and I tried to give my kids an answer. My mom and dad said, when a kid asks a question, because I told you so is not an answer. If a kid has a question, they deserve an answer. Not I told you so, or just because I said so. And I tried to live by that. Didn't always work out for me, okay? I said tried. And that's why when folks say, try to be good today, I said, I'll try. <laughs> you know, you don't want to make commitments you can't keep. <laughs> and you never know. With that short fuse we talked about last week. You don't, you never know. But uh, James chapter 1 verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Not in some things, in all his ways. I remember, if you teach a child what's right and what's right, I remember that little old town we lived in had one Pentecostal church, two or three Methodist church, three or four Baptist church, and we all uh, fellowshiped. And um, our church was small. We didn't have a vacation Bible school. So we sent our kids to all the vacation Bible school. We were friends with all these people. But Rebecca, you know, uh, any of you know Rebecca, she, if she got something to say, you're probably going to hear it. Uh, she learned that from her dad, you know. I mean, I don't want nobody to leave wondering what I had to say, okay? <laughs> and so her, her, her teacher in the Bible, in the, uh, 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 vacation Bible school we're talking about salvation and so she ups and says uh that's not right <laughs> and she wanted to argue and she said no that's not in the Bible and the teacher tried to wash, wash it all away but we did hear about it <laughs> but that was okay because I actually went to okay we talk about Pentecost okay I went to Pentecost church 
And uh, I got a flack from some parents because my kids were telling their kids some stuff they didn't want to hear. And when they come to me, I said, well, their kids were just telling your kids right. I said, I ain't outside the Bible, and so don't argue with me over it. I said, I'm sorry your kids got offended, and I'm sorry if you're offended. But if this offends you, I can't help you. You've got to let this build you up, not offend you. Because the truth does hurt sometimes. The truth does hurt, regardless of that old saying, the truth never hurt. But the thing about truth is, my mom always told me, if you tell the truth, you never have to remember what you're saying. If you tell a lie, then you tell a lie to cover that lie, and, lie, and you forgot which lie was covering which one. But if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember. It's always the truth. The truth never changes. Lies change. That's what makes them lies. Like the ladies at the fence. Gossiping. Tell me more. Tell I've already told you more than I know. And that's the way gossiping does. It just the story gets better every time it's told. And when it gets to the last person, they don't even recognize the way it started out. It had nothing to do with what it ended up being. But sometimes that's how it goes. I've had folks I went to church with that would ground their children. And there's nothing wrong with grounding kids, okay? I'm not but they grounded them from church activities. I have a problem with this. Kids have got all kind of stuff they love to do. If it ain't nothing but staying up late, if it ain't nothing but going outside, ground them to the inside of the house for two or three days. But don't ever ground a kid from going to church activity or function, even if it's with, if it's with the young people. What kind of example is that set? And how important is going to the house of God? How important is it to fellowship with the young people you go to church with? It's very important. We have to pick and choose the stuff. I remember uh, James Dobson one time, he said, never say no to a kid except for the important things. Stuff that don't mean a hill of beans. You ain't got to say no to everything just because you don't like it. Everything's not a sin. <laughs> but there are a lot of things that are not a sin that will lead to sin. And so you be sure if you have a problem and a question, go see your pastor. He'll point it out to you. If it is or it ain't or if it's going to lead there, just ask him. And uh, don't tell him I sick y'all on him. <laughs> He'll find out anyway. <laughs> Proverbs 17 and 6 says, Children's children are the crown of old men. That's my grandkids. Why do you think we moved back over here from West Tennessee? We liked it where we was at. We were comfortable. We didn't have to answer to nobody when we got ready to go out and eat. But we moved back here anyhow to be close to them kids and grandkids, so now we have to answer to everybody when we go out to eat. They call, where are you at? We went out to eat. You didn't tell us you was going nowhere. I'm 63 years old. When do I have to quit telling you where I'm going somewhere? And, of course, the answer is never. You never have to quit telling us. you got to always tell us. Proverbs 26, 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And yet, we wonder sometimes. We do all we know to do. And, and, and I told you, I think, sometime back, you know, when I had my first young when Rebecca was born, I told Mom, I said, you know, won't you take and raise them up to about there? She says, so I ain't raising more kids. I done raised 11, and I'm not raising no more. I hope I taught you how to raise them. She said, remember? And when the church door would open, we was there. I remember back whenever there was something going on, just about all the We was always at a rally or a revival and, and we're talking about revival. We're not talking about three or four nights and then three or four nights off and three or four nights. We're talking about weeks on end. Six and seven week revivals without a break. And the preachers wasn't getting paid near what they get paid now. But when we begin to teach our children, we wonder as they get older if we've done anything right. And so, as I was 
getting this lesson ready, <laughs> I asked myself the question, as we all have, did I do anything right? Well, I can look and see I've done something right. I got some great kids, great grandkids. Not great grandkids, but great grandkids, okay? <laughs> they are great. But but we ask ourselves if we if we've done everything we could. And so in saying that, like I said, I, I talk about my family and, and I hope y'all not offended. We're not I'm nothing special. My family nothing special except I'm saved by the grace of God, just like everybody else. But I know more about my family than I do yours. And if I knew anything about yours and talked about them, you'd get mad at me and never talk to them again. But I've yet to have anybody get mad at me about talking about my family except my family. <laughs> and they don't matter. They'll get over it. They're family. And uh, <laughs> they'll get over it. I'll make sure they do. You know, it's like the fellas said, we're going to have to have peace if I have to fight you over it. You know, you like those kind of statements. They make a lot of sense, don't they? <laughs> but uh, but uh, my family is nothing special to you, maybe, but they are to me, and I know more about them. And so if you'll indulge me, I want to read you. My kids are always so good. They've always been good to give me cards on special days and even on days that wasn't special. So that made it a special day. And... Uh, they got all that from their mom. She used to send cards to everybody she knew. And uh, got to be a financial burden, so I told them, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but, but cards do get expensive. The, the mail does get expensive now, not necessarily the cards. But as I want to read a few cards that I got on Father's Day. You know when you begin to wonder. And every once in a while, I still pull these out. It's been a while. I had to dig them out the other day. Caught a I knew where they were at, but I didn't have them close by. Because every once in a while, I pull them out and read them. My kid don't know this. I save all our cards for birthdays and Father's Day. I've got a box full of them. Because sometimes I try to remind myself if I did anything. I hadn't ever went back to them now and asked them if they changed their mind, okay? I hadn't went back and asked them if they changed their mind from the time they wrote these. They said, relax, Dad. Can I bring you a drink? It's your day. Can I adjust your pillow? Can I get your slippers? Can I borrow 10 bucks? I'm just kidding, Dad. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> you know, some of these are humorous. Some are not humorous, but they're good cards. But Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bone. And sometimes when I'm feeling down, I can just read some of these, and sometimes I smile and sometimes I cry because I, I must have done something right. I didn't get it all right, and we're not always going to get it all right, but we can always try. That's the secret. Always try. We're flesh. We're human. We're going to fail, but we don't have to be failures. said, Dad, when I think of all those years you provided me, with a roof over my head, food on the table, and clothes to wear, all I can say is, why did I ever move out? <laughs> Happy Father's Day. <laughs> yeah. And you have to understand, that was probably written in sincerity. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I owe you more than you know, unless you kept real close tabs on your loose change. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> but that ain't changed. I still try to not leave my loose change laying around. My wife puts it in her bank. <laughs> Kids taught her how to do that. Said it was all right. Dad let them get away with it, so Mom gets away with it. And so, so that's how it goes. From time to time, everybody needs some confirmation that we're doing a little something right. Even, even God, sometimes go to him and say, God, am I, am I doing all I can do? Are you pleased with what I'm doing? And you know, when we go through trials especially, it's good to know that God's in our corner. 
uh, suffice it to say, I went through some stuff here a while back. And I spent a many a night and day crying and weeping and questioning. And I had fellow ministers come to me that knew nothing about my situation and problem. And said, Brother Alfred, the Lord wanted me to tell you, you've done what you were sent to do. And I began to weep because it's good to get some confirmation to know if you've done anything right when you feel like nothing's right. And the situation didn't look like anything was right. But said I was sent to do exactly what was done. And so when you get confirmation, it makes it a lot easier to go through this stuff. I'm going to read a few more if that's okay. Is that okay? I don't show hands. I don't. If it ain't a majority, I ain't going to read no more. All right. Thank y'all for being so kind. For my father, you know that I have, I love you and that I think you're a wonderful father. You've always put your family first and done whatever you could to give us comfort and security. But maybe you don't know how I see you as a person. We see you as a man of principle who stands up for what he believes in. We see you as someone who is liked and respected by many people, not only because you're fun to be with, but because you go out of your way to do things for others. We see you as a man we admire more than words can say. If you weren't my father, I'd wish you were. And I hope these ain't changed. I've got a couple more because as we reflect, no matter how old we get, there comes a time in our life we still question. Now, I've got to look through my card and see if I got any like this recently. <laughs> said, it's your fault. I love good thunderstorms. I wear out a good joke. Or a good story. I'm proud to be an American. I'll try any food once. Sleeping in means I get up at 7. My heart breaks for those who are hurting. My children love to be rocked to sleep. And I love to rock them. I've been called a Nazi of punctuality. My stillness sometimes, my silliness sometimes overruns my sanity. And any of you knows me sometimes. Of course, that goes back to, I think, letting your mouth kick in ahead of your brain, which is never a good thing, not ever. And the last one, Dad. How do I begin to tell you all that you mean to me and just how much I love you? Words will never be enough. If I had one word to describe my childhood, I guess the best word would be protected. I always felt protected by your love, your strength, and your support. You've always stood between me and whatever danger lay ahead. Looking back with the eyes of adulthood, I can see that there were times of want and turmoil, but you never allowed us to be touched by those things. They're not part of the memories I hold in my heart. As a teenager, I remember the times you would put your arms around me and pray for me. In those moments, I knew that whatever battle I was facing would, co would cower in the face of your prayers. Your unwavering example of faith in God has helped me get to where I am today. I know that you have faced times of doubt, and I have watched you struggle in your faith and question God's plan, but you never turned from him or his sheltering love. That is why I put my trust in him today. You taught me that holding on through every storm and putting your faith in God will never be a mistake. You've always made it easy to see God as a loving and caring Heavenly Father 
because that's the kind of earthly father that you are. You're my hero. As a child, I depended on you to fix the broken toys or problems in my life, and you always did. As a young adult, I still counted on you to fix the broken things in my life, and you taught me how to allow God to fix the problems. As a woman, I still need Daddy to fix broken things from time to time and to listen to the problems as we lift them up to God together. I love you so much and hope that you know how very much you mean to me. I hope that when you look at my life, you're proud of the woman I've become because you helped make me what I am. When you're having doubts and feeling down, those kind of things help. And I know we all have our doubts sometimes about, especially when things ain't going like we would like for them to go with our kids. But we can look back and know, as long as they have something to hold on to, we have our anchor that we can hold on to in every situation. And he will never let us down. That song, what's his name? The Anchor Holds. I love that song. I sat and cry through that whole song to realize no matter what situation. And if we can instill in our children the love that they need to feel, the love that we get from God, if we can instill it in our children, no matter what they go through or where they wind up, they can always know that there's an anchor they can hold on to. They can call mom and dad and know that they'll be there with open arms. The prodigal son went out and done all the things he wanted to do in life and lived it up until all the money was gone. But when he come back, the scripture said the father wasn't in the bedroom waiting on his son to call. He saw him coming afar off and ran to meet him. And that's the way God is. And that's the way we need to be not only as earthly fathers. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And I know that most of us in this class, like I said, our children are already gone, grown. But we, as the children of God, are role models to those kids and children that come out of the world into this church. And they're looking for something different, and they're looking for a role model. Some of them don't have any love at home. They come in abused, misused, confused. And their parents don't even know where they are and don't care. And when they come in here, they need to find somebody that cares. Our children's grown. We can't forget about them. It's just like I tell folks about outreach for a church. We need to be reaching out all over this city. But we can't reach out so far and forget all of those that's under our arm. They still need attention, too. And so when they come in here, they need to know that they have a mother and father in the Lord that's looking out for them, and we can be a role model to them. Children are heritage of the Lord. They belong to him. They were lent to us. So let's take care of them. Whether it's your own personal child or someone else's, I've had folks come in, kids come into church and just hug and just hug and hug and hug, and you think they ever, I try not to run them off. Sometimes I've tried to walk off with them carrying on my leg, but they don't get anything. People, people show uh, love in all different ways, but I can tell you, I hope I don't embarrass my kids, but if, we, if we're in a mall or wherever we are, Brother Stubb, if it's been a while I saw my kids, they'd come hug my neck in the mall. And they're all grown. And I sure don't hesitate to accept a hug. And them grandbabies, they getting a little big. They want to come and jump on me and hug my neck. And they done got big enough to knock me over when they jump on me. And I've seen grown kids that have never had a hug from their parents. 
when I pray for folks, I ask God to wrap his arms around them and let them to feel that because sometimes that's all we can hang on to. I know when I got word that my dad passed away, I literally felt the arms of God reach around me. I can't explain the feeling, but he said, it's going to be all right. Brother Taylor, I, I, I realized he didn't tell me he was going to be all right. He said it was going to be all right. And I got to the hospital, and some of you may know Brother Jerry Dillon, good friend of our families most of my life. He came into the hospital on that Wednesday night before Dad passed away, midnight. He said the Lord spoke to him and told him to go to the hospital and pay, pray for Brother Alford. He went to the hospital and he said, I thought I was coming to pray for your dad. He said, but I came to pray for you and the Lord wanted you to know he's given you all you need. He's already equipped you. Because I had a mother and dad that loved me and pointed me to God and let me to realize and showed me that he could help me in any situation. Church, we need to love those children and teenagers that come in here. Oh, they're teenagers. I know about teenagers. And a bad part about some of those teenagers never grow out of it. And I apologize to my wife. We never grow out of it. But some teen they can be a handful, but they still need love. We have to love them, whether we like them or not. We have to love them. Appreciate your church. Amen. You're dismissed.